our research project was talking about uh, lithidograss or how or uh, how we know it as Zydra, which was a newer drug that's been on the market since about July 2016. Lefitograst or Zydra basically works by binding to the integrin lymphocyte function or LFA1, which is a cell surface protein found on leukocytes, and it blocks the interaction of LFA1 with ICAM1. Uh, to kind of summarize that, uh, a paper talks about it blocking the recruitment and activation of T cells to the ocular surface, thus lessening the overall inflammatory response. Uh, it's dosed one drop twice a day in a single-use container. The uh, studies talk about adverse reactions in the 5 to 25 percent range, mostly consisting of irritation, uh, altered taste, and reduced visual acuity. Uh, I kind of think about this drug in terms of working alongside uh, Restasis uh, as a substitute for that. So our research study, what we wanted to, what we looked at was about 125 charts between July of when the drug came out and April of this year. And the inclusion criteria was that the patient must be diagnosed with keratoconjunctivitis sicca or, and be prescribed Zydra and use that drug for at least one month. Exclusion criteria consisted of uh, the patient could not have an infection. They could not have stopped the drug early. Two things that we looked at that I want to explain a little bit is uh, the tear lab testing and the inflammatory testing. Basically, the tear lab is intended to measure the osmolarity in human tears. Uh, an elevated reading, which is over 300, indicates could in indicate uh, instability of the tear film, uh, and osmolarity is an important biomarker for ocular surface health. Second thing is the inflammatory testing, which detects uh, matrix metalloproteinase 9, uh, which is an inflammatory marker that can be elevated in tiers of uh, patients with dry eye syndrome or dry eye disease. And also, the inflammation can be present before uh, clinical signs that we see on exam. So in our study, we uh, were brought down to 39 patients that uh, had the diagnosis of dry eye as well as completed at least a month of um, Zydra, and the average age of these patients were 63 and a half, and most of these patients were female. So our first research question was, is Zydra effective, and what time frame does it seem to work? So I've got two graphs. The first one we looked at is Zydra at one month, and the second is Zydra at three months. Um, this was the time frame that the patients were brought back uh, in to see uh, Dr. Fowler. And so what we found was that at one month, uh, all the, the eyes had improved tear osmolarity, improved inflammatory, as well as the patients reported in improved subjective uh, quality of their uh, dry eye disease. So we also found the same thing at three months as well. It's continued improvement, uh, at least in the inflammatory and the subjective improvement, um, not as much in the tear osmolarity. Some of the side effects that I found looking through the patient charts is that seven of these 39 patients said they absolutely could not tolerate Zydra and stopped it um, right at the one month mark and said they would not use it anymore. 12 of those 39 also complained of just general irritation. Another interesting thing was that the literature talks about patients that are on Zydra can have decreased visual acuity. While we, the, a limitation in our study is that we didn't look at the visual acuity, no patients uh, reportedly complained of blurry vision. Most of their complaints were altered taste and uh, irritation. The second question that we wanted to ask is there, is there a specific type of patient that Zydra works best in? So we split the 39 patients into three different subgroups, uh, virgin eyes, restasis, and severe. So the virgin eye group are patients that have really not had treatment for dry eye. They might be on some over-the-counter supplements or artificial tears, but they've never been prescribed pulse steroids, they've never been prescribed restasis. Um, so there were 16 of those patients. The second group is the restasis eyes, which is exactly what it sounds like, patients that have just been on restasis uh, twice a day. And then the severe uh, dry eye group were patients that have tried um, all the over-the-counter supplements. They've tried steroids, 
They've tried restasis even four times a day and yet still don't have any improvement in their dry eye symptoms. So the first group, the virgin eye group, we found that uh, a high correlation with inflammatory testing and that it significantly approved it. And this is, this is from one to three months. And, and as well as uh, at least uh, 11 eyes complained of reported improved subjective um, complaints as well. Second group is their stasis eyes. We continue to see improved inflammatory testing with these uh, eyes as well as continued subjective improvement. And then lastly, the severe dry, dry eye group as well. So I think this is interesting because you know, these patients have been on all of the other types of medicines. They've been on restasis and maybe their inflammatory hasn't improved. And now once their Zydra is added or substituted for stasis, they have negative inflammatory testing as well as subjective improvement too. So in the subject conclusion, I think that Zydra may seem to have a, uh, has a greater effect on inflammatory testing other than uh, compared with tear osmolarity. All the subgroups in, uh, reported higher rates of subjective improvement in terms of their quality of dry eye symptoms. And I think that Zydra can be beneficial in all types of dry eye patients as well. I think if you look at the previous studies, the Opus 2, which looked at Zydra in mild and moderate dry eye, and the Opus 3, which looked at Zydra effects in moderate and severe dry eye, they found the same thing, that Zydra was effective improving the eye dryness score. Overall, I think Zydra, uh, in answer to the first research question, I think Zydra can have a uh, positive effect earlier than three months. I know a lot of times when we start patients on restasis, we say, please, please try to stay on this for at least three months because it can take that long to work. But what we saw was that bringing back patients at one month, they reported in improvement in the quality of their um, symptoms and quality of life in terms of their vision. Zydra can also... Um, have greatest effect on improving inflammatory testing, and then also think it's reasonable to use Zydra as a first-line treatment for dry eye uh, disease, or as a um, alternative, or as a last option as well to patients that have been maybe on restasis four times a day. I think some of the limitations is that uh, Zydra hasn't been out super long, so uh, we don't we might not know its greatest potential or weaknesses. I think. Also, a limitation in our study is that we have a smaller number of patients and the follow-up isn't consistent on every single one in terms of when they came back and the testing that was performed at each visit. I think further studies could look at uh, patients, uh, a larger number of patients, uh, as well as longer follow-up than just one in three months. So thanks, Dr. Fowler, and we're happy to answer any questions.